Welcome to another depressing episode. This is episode 34, by the way. <laughs> and the note and the note I got was we were going to talk about the end of the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so in in regard to that, so here's here's some funny stuff. And and I I truthfully I've never been to a dot Indian funeral, but I've been to a native one. Um, mm-hmm. And depending on which tribe it is and what their customs are, pretty interesting. I've been to mm-hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses ones, really, really, really quick, like really, really quick. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the, shockingly quick. Are they the people who don't believe in like the afterlife, or which one is that? Too? Where they're like, yeah, it's dead. Fuck it, carry on. Sure. Okay, I don't want to be wrong on this and nobody send me a note. So I had a lady that I worked with that was a, a chef and she was mm-hmm. Jehovah's. And so when they did hers, nobody really talked about her or anything. They gave a quick sermon and it was over. Uh-huh. And then I had to go up to the family and go, God, I'm, here in America, everybody's expecting you to have a party, you know, or some mm-hmm. kind of after breakfast or anything. So they owned a restaurant at that time and we had to hodgepodge put it together. But, you know, they, just, they didn't know, you know, you don't know. I mean, they had moved here from Mexico, everybody. And and uh, goodness gracious became the best Americans you could. They all owned their own companies and employed people. And, you know, mm-hmm. same thing like you did. <laughs> so, <laughs> but culturally, like my people, yeah, um, and not, not I'm not just talking about Catholics, but Irish people, we think of death as like an escape from this place. You know, like yeah. it's got to be better. And I don't, I don't even know who to, who to blame for that. You know? but, mm. but it's not, a, it, for us, it's not a sad thing. Like I've been to um, some African-American ones and they were really, really, really dramatic. And, uh, and I thought I, I'm just fascinated by it. I'm just fascinated by how people do it. And I've also been to ones where lawyers died. And as soon mm. as one hour was up, a bunch of people got up and left. Like they had shit they had to do. <laughs> <laughs> basically it was like a billing hour gap <laughs> yeah so here's here's some funny stuff i've seen happen um i've seen uh, a priest basically fall and i'm not saying the guy was intoxicated but it looked like it i've seen people cuss from the pulpit on accident and then go mm-hmm. oh shit i just cussed you know <laughs> to make it worse um i have i've seen i haven't seen a coffin drop but almost drop and then the mm-hmm. funniest one that I've ever seen is my dad, you know, was a construction guy from, from day one. Uh, when we were all in grade school, he was a salesman, but he was a construction guy, re- simple Irish guy. Mm-hmm. So when he dies, he says he wants one of these coffins made by this priest from Ireland that makes him in the basement of the church. And it's basically like high quality plywood. Cause you know, you got to be able to lift it up with a 200 pound person inside. Mm-hmm. And so we do the wake, which is now the custom you do the wake in the morning and then the funeral right afterwards unless you're real old school and um and this guy comes up with like six screws to screw the thing together and there's hundreds and hundreds of people in the church but it's dead silent and all you hear is (laughs) and everyone in my family half of the people own construction companies and they're like my god somebody get him a screw gun and let's get this over with (laughs) And honest to God, it was a Monty Python skit. It goes on for 10 minutes. I have no idea why they felt like they needed to do that. (laughs) But it did light. It did lighten everything up. I I won't lie. It did. So um, Mm -hmm. you and I were talking about the passing of my sister, Jeannie, who's a very, very good friend of mine. We're, we're quite similar personality wise. So, you know, heated arguments and, and quick, quick forgiveness. Um, you know that that thing about it, she had cancer, and I gotta honestly tell you, that just eats people up. And by the end, you just want them out of pain. And, you know, and mm. I really mean that. And so I'm not upset or angry. I, you know, I have this ability, like if I hug somebody, I know whether it's the last time I'm ever gonna see him again alive. Oh wow. And mm. I can I can inherently feel it. <clears throat> I'm oddly correct. So um so yeah, I'll head back up uh, there later this week for a, for a funeral and everything. But you know, it'll be a it'll it'll be fun and the food will be delicious. And I know oh, that yeah. you know you're there. To, we are there to celebrate their life. We aren't there to mourn their death. Mm-hmm. 
And that I think culturally makes us different. Like my wife is Italian. They are there to mourn the death and work through their feelings. Now, Indian funerals are very similar to Italian ones where it's like super dramatic, like people bellowing at the top of their voice about the person who's gone. And I'm just standing there most of the time going like, okay, (laughs) I do not know what to say. (laughs) Well, you know, I got to be honest with you. I was at one earlier this year and you know the guy Mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't recognize who they were talking about. No. I, I really mean it. I was sitting there going, do, do you guys know this guy? Because, <laughs> you know, and, <clears throat> you, we all believe we know people. And uh, mm. and in my in my line of work, I see people at their best and I see them at their worst. And yeah. uh, and generally, I, you know, it's just life, man. It's, it literally, it's just like everybody's doing the best they can. Um, but it was, yeah, I, I left there feeling worse than I did when I showed up. Oh yeah, <laughs> see, in right. Hindu funerals, like uh, my, our family's tradition is where it's basically uh, crematoriums or yeah. a funeral pyre. Because I remember when I had to do the last rite. So in Hindu custom, I think it's where the son has to, the oldest son has to perform the last rites, and. Yeah. It's like a really beautiful ceremony because that is the one at the actual graveyard. It's done there. Right. And yeah. in our Hindu funerals, we don't allow women to come to the graveyard. Like they basically do their moaning at the house. It's actually, oh. it, there is a scientific reason to this. Back in the day, every time the women went to with, like towards the graveyard, they would always fall ill from some bugs or whatever the decomposition no of the bodies right so <clears throat> it was just like wow. inbuilt where they don't wow. know and uh it's it's huh. it's beautifully weird because the priest kind of puts like a clay pot on your shoulder and he yeah. breaks a hole in it it's filled with water and you do like yeah. three circles around the body kind of like oh, cool. cleansing it and all of that yeah. and Ooh. um you basically set the you set the body on fire Oh, well, I, I'm OK yeah. with that. Plus, you don't waste mm-hmm. any space yeah. So in, in Ireland, <clears throat> in Ireland, the um, graveyards are like six and eight people deep. Mm-hmm. And and I love some of my relatives, but not all of them. I don't want to be stuck in a hole with them for, you know, eternity, for <laughs> lack of a better word. I mean, I really, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I'd like to say that. I, I loved every one of them that much. Ah, that's just not true. So, <laughs> and the other thing over there is if they committed suicide, they weren't allowed in the um, church graveyard. Mm-hmm. They like buried you over by a tree. Yeah, but they put the pagans. Very weird. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, and, and you know, we we were druids. Irish people were druids before the Catholic mm-hmm. Church came along. So whole different belief structure. If you've ever seen what's called a Celtic cross, it's a cross mm-hmm. with a circle in the middle of it. Well, that's because we worship the sun. And that was a negotiation with the church. You put the sun in the background and the cross. But worshiping oh, wow. the sun made sense to us because you needed the sun to grow food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were usually lacking in food on that crappy little island. So, <laughs> <laughs> Like, I do remember this thing where... Um... <laughs> I think after the funeral, the, basically you just get that little thing of ashes from the crematorium. Right. And we have to go to this. Uh, in India, we do it in this one place called Sangam, which basically means like the confluence of five rivers in South India. Oh, wow. Nice. And there you do like a little ceremony to basically... Hinduism believes that the reincarnation, but also if you've broken the cycle, it's like eternal peace, nirvana, or whatever. And you there put you the ashes in that river. They take you out on a little boat and you dump it out as the guy is on the boat. Oh, cool. Well, that beats the hell out of going to the cliffs of Moore in Ireland, throwing your ashes out and have them blow back in your face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the sea air comes back, which is what happens more than, more. Every, every time I've been there, somebody's throwing ashes and it's just landing all over them. It's, it's weirdly <laughs> gross. Yeah. Do you ever think... Was that, was that the butt potion of the ash? <laughs> right, right. Which part did you get? Okay, so here's here's the one thing I've been waiting for that nobody's ever done. I just want somebody of some religion to come back and go, we were the right one. Go with us. We were the right one. 
So mm-hmm. when I was a little kid, um, the Catholics used to teach that we were the only ones going to heaven. And the Jehovah's teach that they're the only ones going to heaven. And the Baptists used to teach that they were the only ones going to heaven. And uh, and literally, there's jokes been made forever about it. I always thought reincarnation made sense <clears throat> because we're dropped here. We have no instructions, yet you're supposed to figure it out. Mm-hmm. But then I also think atheists have a good argument where they go, if God was ever knowing, loving, and forgiving, show me on earth where that's that way. And if we were really made in the image of God, why do we make such weird choices that harm others? And mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I can't argue with that one either, but I am still waiting for somebody to come back and say, mine was the religion that worked. Since we're all mm-hmm. not just donating to it, but willing to die for that belief. <laughs> Is that yeah. a little too deep for our uh, I don't know. I was actually going to tell you about this. Um, there's this book called... Uh... Yeah, the name of the book escapes me, but it's actually a play in verse where yeah. it's basically God and Satan having a conversation. Right. And um, I think it's like God asked Satan to go look at what happened to uh, Job. Right. And this is like at the part where everything has been taken from Job. And uh, Satan comes back and he says, yeah, we, I saw him, but he did not curse you. And in the play, it says, if God is good, he is not God. If God is God, he cannot be good. <laughs> right. There's, I mean, there's, there's a fair argument to be made there. And, and you know, I, I always laugh and go, those kind of conversations are blasphemy. Because when I was a kid, you get the shit beat out of you in Catholic school for even mm-hmm. ad- admitting that there are other thought patterns that might be right. Because my deal is half the half the world does not believe as I believe. Mm-hmm. And so are they all doomed to this internal fire hell that we've created? Um, because that seems that seems awfully, awfully lot of people for a dad that's nice to send you to. <laughs> you know, and for one and for one sin to leave you there forever if you don't follow mm-hmm. these rules of telling this dude who is the intermediary between you and God. But Bill Burr actually has a beautiful bit on that where he's like, you made me in your image. Some of this should be your fault. And he's like, see, <laughs> but you also, ca- you cannot actually like put me in hell and burn me for all eternity if you made it. Like, say, for instance, I build a car and the car doesn't run properly. I'm not going to be like, you useless piece of shit car, go burn in hell forever. <laughs> I will basically break it down and figure out what the hell is going on with the car rather than be like yeah. a piece of <laughs> Right. I, it's, I, I find the whole thing fascinating. And then, you know, just from a historical standpoint, you know, as, as we've talked about on here before, <clears throat> my family were the people, you know, running some of the armies in the Crusades. So we weren't just uh, just mild participants. We were doing some <laughs> of the serious damage. And you go, and all of that, for mm-hmm. what? You know, you literally think be, that you're going to make it there and somebody else isn't going to. It's, it's fascinating. I, and fascinating for humans, especially as we continue. And I don't even know who I had this conversation with. I said, you know who I want to be. I want to be on that, on the version of the Hubble telescope now that's taking these amazing photos of the universe. And they go, oh, yeah. really? And I go, oh, yeah, God, I want the driver's seat. I mean, if there's legitimately a heaven for me, that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I don't know what, what the version of hell would be for me other than, you know, Manic insanity, I think, would be, would be my version. So, <laughs> Sean, your so help would not probably a, be a kitchen with misplaced items, and you have to just am, keep searching for shit that's gone missing for the rest of your oh life. My God. <laughs> yes, that would be so punishment. You know, <laughs> you know, Rachel Ray, the the TV personality, mm-hmm. they purposely misplace her tools all the time. And if you watch her show, she'll be going drawer to drawer to find stuff. <laughs> and she doesn't fire them because it's because really, I think it, what it does is make her focus on what's going on. And it feels like your own home where you can't find shit. Yeah. And in a kitchen, in a kitchen, a high volume kitchen during a rush, the worst thing in the world is not being able to find the one thing you needed right then. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> yeah. So, but um, yeah. So I, 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 I think the kind of the transition on all of that stuff is every time I go to a funeral, I find out which one of my friends no longer go to Catholic church because they say the mass differently than we did when we were kids. And they'll say the old terms and, you know, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I really, and truly, Hey, I just want people to be good. I don't, I don't care what their religion background or anything else is. Now this one with my sister is going to be interesting. Her husband is Muslim and oh, wow. I don't remember him ever going to Catholic mass with us anywhere. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how everybody helps him arrange it or, cause I live in a different city now. I don't get to be, the problem with living yeah. in a different city is you're you're not a participant; you're a visitor. Sure. I, I I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the truth. So, yeah. <laughs> but, and we also have Baha'i in our family, and then a few different versions of Christianity, which which is almost yeah. fun because people will kill each other over that too. <laughs> <laughs> there was like this uh, Irish uh, comedian who talks about. Uh, what they call a mixed marriage in Ireland when a Protestant yeah. marries oh, a Catholic. Prot- <laughs> like, we we have marriage. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we have one of those. So it's my cousin Vivian. And so when we were first at his house, he I, he felt like he needed to explain it to us. Oh, wow. And I go, yeah, Viv, I don't care. He's like, well, but I mean, you know, she's okay. Like, like in the 50s, you would talk about a person who was black that you brought to dinner. Well, they're okay. This mm. one's Okay. <laughs> and uh, and she was really sweet and a great host and they've got a bunch of kids and you know they're moving on in life i think they're both in their mid-60s now so the the crazy religion where one kneels and the other one doesn't uh survived <laughs> <laughs> the way they talk but, about it it's uh, almost like one part of the aisle is waving a giant dragon right. the other part is just right. chanting something and jumping up and down right. i'm like dude it's not that <laughs> So what I what I would equate it to, and I don't know because you guys probably had the same thing up until the Brits left with Gandhi, is for some reason or another the British people like to rub it in people's faces that they're occupying your country, mm. and so they will have a so in Ireland it's called Orange Day, and they dress up in whatever their tartans are and usually something orange for William of Orange, which still make he makes even less sense. We'll, we'll throw that aside for now. But then they like to walk down the main street and my people go, oh, well, then we'll just shoot you from the building. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you're going to be a dick, we'll just shoot you from the building. And that's mm. the way it works every single year. And then they go, I don't know why these people are shooting. And you go, I don't know why you keep marching. <laughs> and that is not a solvable problem. Mm. So oh, so yeah. look at it at your stuff, your guys' stuff. And let's let's go with, anywhere in the Middle East where England has it in a really nice museum. And and we're far enough along now where you go, go, why don't you guys just return that to us? And they go, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you. And they walk away. <laughs> I know, like all the right. stolen shit from Africa, India, and all the other yeah. colonies. <laughs> right. And you just go, but that's but that's how they are. I mean, I as a government, I don't, you know, as a people, I've always found Brits to be okay. Other than they really yeah. say racist shit about, uh, right in front of me about Irish people. <laughs> like, like I'm, my cousin will be like you know he's right there they go yeah but he's american he's american it's okay <laughs> you it's very strange Sean. <laughs> exactly i'm lost between my two worlds my man i'm lost but they but they seem to enjoy doing that stuff and and god bless them for thinking it's a good idea every year mm-hmm. you know I, I don't know what that does for your ego <laughs> Yeah. Two or three, of, <laughs> two or three of them get killed every year when they do it. <laughs> That's like, see, some of the countries are good at self-deprecating humor, and they just leave it alone, right? But if yeah. someone else says it, then it's no, no, right. <laughs> it's not good, right? <laughs> the best, co- the best comedy I've ever heard about um, it was Scotland actually, and and being ruled by wankers. And, uh, and so he would be like, you know, the most upsetting thing isn't that they had a better army or anything else. It's just they're awful human beings. And then he would go the whole line through his comedy and he'd go, and what is really even worse is they're in charge, which makes us bigger wankers than they are wankers. 
How bad do you have to be? Right. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff, Sal. All right. So do we need to talk about the end of the world before this broadcast ends? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right. So for those of you listening, Deepak sent me a video and it's like how the world is going to end. And basically the guy goes, the sun's going to blow us up or burn us up or just stupidity. <laughs> I think yeah. I'm, going with, I'm going with door number two. <laughs> I'm I, telling you, human stupidity is going to kill us before the uh, sun expands. And what does he say? It's got, it'll lightly toast us or singe us as they're rotating. <laughs> What a great way to put it. <laughs> and then follows with, or sheer stupidity. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I thought it was going to be a 30 minute program, y'all. And I was out walking my dog and I'm trying to watch it. So, you know, I, I know what I'm supposed to, or what we're, we're background infoing today. And uh, it, it was about two minutes. You should put yeah. it in the link. Yeah, I will. It's, For worth, sure. it's worth watching. We have obvious. So did you see Burning Man out in um, Nevada? So we have this big mm -hmm. music festival called Burning Man. It's in the middle of the desert. It was created by a bunch of hippies originally, and now the, the fucking yuppies have taken it all over. And mm -hmm. since God hates them, uh, there was a monsoon rain <laughs> in the desert. So Chris Rock, of all people, my, one of my favorite comedians, is trying to walk out of there. But he mm -hmm. can't because the mud is so thick and dense because it's essentially like ash, like wet yeah. ash. He makes it a few miles. Finally, a fan of his picks him up in a Jeep and gets him out of there. But the people are still stuck there until the rain stops, literally. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and then they go, oh, it's this and this and this. You go, we have a few military bases in Nevada. They'll just go do a water drop and a food drop. Just stay mm. there. You were planning on it anyway. Quit acting like you got somewhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's yeah, in an was... RV and they're in a fucking RV and they're like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. You go, you have a bathroom and water and shelter. Shut the fuck up. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just go back inside that RV and sit down till the help arrives. <laughs> and don't turn your engine on. You'll need the gas to leave. Mm. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> I mean, undoubtedly, climate change is hitting here. And undoubtedly, we are doing nothing about it. And, yeah. you know, obviously, it's going to hit poor countries worse. But we yeah. are... I had a friend of mine that was like, should I move to California or Florida? And I'm like, I'd be looking at Oklahoma or Kansas right now. I don't know why you would move to a coastal area at this point. I mean, I don't because California, if it's not on fire or drought, it's flooding. You know, it's yeah. and that is. Did you ever go here? Did you ever go there when you were here? Yeah, I did. Dude. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful state. And San Francisco is gorgeous. L.A. is just a big bowl of pollution and confusion you know that's a that's a city with no soul or purpose mm -hmm. other than film um but san francisco's gorgeous sacramento's gorgeous i mean it really is a, they produce a third of the food americans eat okay. and we haven't realized how important this is yet yeah yeah it is weird so, yeah. that we just but you know i mean i, I <clears throat> my my cousin andy uh, he's a civil engineer in London. And he goes, what's the deal with Americans? And I go, what do you mean? And I know you and I have talked about this before. I'm just saying this for the audience. And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, well, you know, like, like obesity, drug addiction. And I go, oh, we just don't know what the term enough means. And he goes, what? Oh, and I go, mm -hmm. we, we literally don't know what enough is. We always want more. No matter mm -hmm. what it is, we just want more. And meaning more than our share, more than your share, more than we just want more. And I said, it's our addictive personalities. And it's just coming through in the most terrible, terrible ways. And part of that is being able to look at climate change and not do anything about it. Yeah. Do you remember the, uh, the <clears throat> Oklahoma Funeral Association little <laughs> workshop thing that I'd gone to once? They are one yes. of the biggest yes. selling products, <laughs> one of the highest selling, yeah, ignore the fact that I was there, but the highest selling product right. were like these cadaveral lifts because the funeral directors could no longer lift people and put them on the table because of the, of the wow. weight of people changing. So the highest yeah. selling product at that exhibition was basically this, it's called a cadaveral lift and wow. it's to pick up a 
fatty and put them on the table. <laughs> God, that's awful. So when I <clears throat> when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. we were all very thin. My sisters were all very thin. My mom was, you know, we and when we had enough to eat, but that's we did also, shit all day. That, that's all, also the sign of being a liberal, Sean. <laughs> Bone thin. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't like extra you don't like it so yeah it, it's 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 an interesting thing to to see about the just we don't know what enough is and it goes back to that kurt vonnegut quote you know about whatever billionaire's house he was in at the time and they were like he makes more money in a day than you made off of uh fahrenheit uh what's the rest what's the rest part of the book i can't remember and he goes yes but the difference is i know what enough me is and <laughs> I, I'm striving to know what enough is. I don't know if I've ever told you this. My goal in life is to, when I die, only have one key in my pocket. Um, mm -hmm. Since I was 21 years old, I've always had some business to take care of. And I, I don't own multiple houses, but like if I had a rental house, which means I had a house that I didn't sell and mm -hmm. you rent it. It's not that I was a mogul or anything. <laughs> um, my goal is to just have one key and like three outfits. And that's it. Okay. Everybody else's goal is to have 300 outfits, multiple keys. I'm rolling the other way. Isn't that like a selfish thing to do when you drop dead? Your relatives, not only have they, moan, they have to moan for you, but your kids have yeah. to come back and sort through all that crap Clean you your collected setup. during your stupid yeah. life. <laughs> so my, my, my dad kept every suit that he'd ever owned. And yes, they were fun to look through, but nobody still wanted them. You know, I mean, truthfully, at the end, you're just like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's 40 years old. The, the, the moths have gotten it. But what he had to do, he owned a tile setting company. So he had to save matching tile from each job in case something broke <clears throat> to go back. Oh, yeah. So when he died, we literally put a big sign out on, this, on the busy street about a block and a half away and told people to come get whatever samples they wanted. Man, that thing was cleaned out in four hours, the whole basement. We didn't do any. <laughs> but it was odd having people dig through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave my garage looking like it looks right now for my kids to clean out. And every day them going, oh, my God, why would you keep this? What is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I'm God. working on it. Mm -hmm. I know. Hey, what are we at? What are we at time wise? 26 minutes. Uh oh. All right. We got three minutes to go, bro. Well, how do you want to take us out of the end of the world one? How do you want to do that? <laughs> There is no way to take us out of this episode. <laughs> it's just going to be an abrupt end like life, Sean. <laughs> there you go. Right. Being pulled through a, a window mm -hmm. that's not been rolled down far enough, yelling and screaming, <laughs> just, just like we came into this world. Yep. <laughs> so let me let me ask you this. So, so you told me how you guys do it. Hindus, how, how do the other, what do Muslims do? Over there? I've never been to a Muslim funeral and I know tons and tons of Muslims. I, I do know that they have a cemetery, but I've never been to one. Yeah. Um, well, huh. I really wouldn't know, but I do know that I think it's more of a bur burial thing for them. Yeah. And I'm not huh. sure how exactly. Like a preparation of the body deal and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very, very 300 AD, you know, mm -hmm. trying to. I, I, in Ireland, hey, man, they drop them in the ground the next day. So, like, when yeah. one of my cousins dies, we don't even have time to fly over there. They're already in the ground. And uh, yeah. I, I think that's more of a, they're worried about, you know, bubonic plague, black, you know, that kind of shit mm -hmm. coming off of a dead body. Um, kind of like here, when, when people were originally dying of COVID, they burned everybody because they didn't know what else to do. Oh, yeah. Crazy. I didn't think of that, Tim. See, but that's the yeah. thing, though. They told me a lot of people in uh, Bangalore and India basically died during COVID. Yeah. But today I was driving for almost 50 kilometers and I looked around at the traffic and I was like, hmm, not enough. No, no. <laughs> you are. Now that. Okay, open your comedy deal with that. That was phenomenal. Now you're going to get booed, but, but in a good way. You're going to get booed in a good way. Today, then I, you need to actually, go too soon. Is it too soon? <laughs> I was you actually stuck in a today. damn traffic light, <clears throat> and there was this guy. It's a red light, okay? I can't go anywhere. And he's slowly trying to creep his motorcycle and put it in front of me. Right. And I didn't realize that the window was down. So 
I was just saying it out loud where I was like, don't do it, don't do it. And he did it and I was like, you useless piece of shit. This is like <laughs> humans cannot be trusted with anything. And I turn and I see this couple sitting right by my window laughing. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I was like, let me put all the windows up and continue what I was doing. Oh, my God. Okay, that was awesome. <laughs> that is a good way to end our show today, my man. Hell that yeah. was awesome. Okay, so when you open with that joke, mm -hmm. you got to tell me how that goes, because that is a joke to start a show with. I, I came know. back here. <laughs> And let me tell you, everybody said there were a lot of deaths. <laughs> Ooh, you're going to set the mark. That is that, mm -hmm. is, that is pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. I'm going to try, right. try it out this evening. <laughs> cool. I, You know, every time you talk about doing some stand-up, I feel like I should do some. So eventually I, I, I need to I need to write a set. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's my thing. I need to I need to write a set. But I'll get to it. <laughs> I got I got stuff finishing up. And last week, like when my sister died and all that stuff, I had more political shit going on last week than you can ever imagine. So, all right, man, you better take us out of here before we run out of time. Yep. The world is ending pretty soon. We. <laughs> <laughs> Eat those biscuits and gravy. Eat them. It doesn't mm. matter. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, all right, laugh a little bit more than you'll usually do. That's all I'll say. There you go. All right, buddy. Happy Labor Day, even though I know it's not Labor Day. Again, over. Labor Day right, to buddy. you, too. Is that a wish? You <laughs> aren't we both Aren't we both in management? So it's, it's not our day. I know. <laughs> right. I'll see you, Bye. buddy. Have a good day. Bye.